Hey ladies, happy Sunday. I'm sitting here next to my hand-drawn timeline. You're probably wondering, what is she doing? <laughs> um, but I learn by doing. I'm a hands-on learner, and so I wanted to share with you something that has helped me learn my Bible as a whole. I am also a nurse, and when I was studying the human body, I found it helpful to understand the body as a whole before I went digging into each system and trying to understand how each of them worked. In the same way, I think we can apply that to our Bibles. If we take a minute to understand the whole Bible and how it works together to establish a common thread of a coming Savior, I think it's super helpful to our Bible knowledge. So, the goal of this video is to go over the Old Testament. I'm going to try and do it quickly, but there's a lot of information to know. And keep in mind, as I go through this, there's many things that I've left out just to kind of try and find an overall theme throughout. If you open up your Bible to the contents, um, we have the New Testament and the Old Testament. Testament just means covenant or agreement. The Old Testament has 39 books and the New Testament has 27. The Old Testament starts with Genesis. Genesis just means beginning or origin. Um, and that's where we find out that God created the earth and the first human beings. And that's where we read about sin introducing the world. The Old Testament consists of five books of law. Um, it has history, it has poetry, and then it has prophets. Jeremiah, of course, is going to be a prophet that we're going to be reading about. He was warning the people to turn back to God because if they didn't, they were going to go into something called the Babylonian captivity. So I'm just going to start at the beginning and summarize. So we have creation. This is where God made the heavens and the earth. Uh, lightness and darkness is introduced. Then he creates Adam and Eve, and he places them in the Garden of Eden. And he says... You can have anything in this garden, but don't eat of the forbidden fruit. So then we read about Eve and Satan in the garden. Satan is introduced as a serpent, and he tells Eve, did God really say not to eat of the forbidden fruit? And she says, yeah, he did. And Satan says, well, he just knows that you'll end up being like him. And so he convinces Eve to disobey God, and that is when our dilemma begins, and we are separated from God. You know, God is a very loving God, but he's also very just. And so he had to establish some sort of punishment when Eve disobeyed him. So then we keep reading and sin grows. The first murder happened. Cain is jealous of Abel and Cain kills his brother Abel. Then we keep reading and God tells Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. And so they do and the people become evil and God, scripture says that God regrets making them. And so God decides that he's going to destroy his creation, and he's going to create a flood. But there is one righteous man named Noah, and that's where Noah and the ark is introduced. God tells Noah his plan, and he says, hey, build this ark. And he's very specific with the instructions, and Noah listens, and he builds the ark. And scripture says that because Noah was obedient to God, him and his family were saved. And you can read more about that in Genesis 9. So after God destroys the earth, he makes a promise, and that's where the rainbow comes. God says, I'm not going to do this again. Here is a promise that this won't happen again. So then God then commands Noah to be fruitful and multiply. And of course, the people become evil again, and they decide that they're going to build a tower up to heaven to God. God doesn't like this, and so he confuses their languages, and then he disperses them in the lands. And so this is where all of our different languages come from, which I just think that's so interesting to read about the history of our languages. And then later, we're introduced to Abraham. God makes a promise to Abraham. He says he's going to give him a promised land, lots of children, and all nations are going to be blessed through him. This takes a while, and then eventually Abraham does have a son years later, and his name is Isaac. Isaac has Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob didn't start off very well, but he ends up blessed by God. And God changes his name to Israel. Then he has 12 sons. And those sons become the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you read through the Old Testament, it can be kind of confusing because there's all these different tribes. But those tribes come from being, those tribes come from the 12 sons, which came from Jacob. So then we read that among the 12 sons, there is a boy named Joseph. And Joseph is hated by his brothers. They're jealous of him because his father gave him a coat of many colors and it seems like he kind of played favorites with Joseph. So his brothers sell him into slavery, and that's how Joseph ends up in Egypt. Now, the story of Joseph is amazing. God's providence is really shown throughout his life. But long story short, 
Joseph ends up rising to power in Egypt and saves his brother from a famine that's going on in the land. And Joseph brings his whole family to Egypt. As time goes by, the people in Egypt get kind of nervous because the Hebrew people, or God's people, start to outnumber them. So they make them slaves. God decides to deliver them out of slavery, and that's where we meet Moses. Moses leads the people into the wilderness, and up until this point, God has provided for them. He's done everything that he told them that they would do, and they still don't trust him. But in the wilderness, this is where the law is given, the Ten Commandments. But since the people don't trust God and turn against him again, they're sent into 40 years of wilderness. And a lot of stuff happens during this time. You can go back and read it through Exodus um, and Leviticus numbers. You can read about the law that Moses was given and all the various components that were given to them. Um, So after 40 years, Joshua leads them into the promised land. Moses can't enter the promised land because he disobeys God. I was once studying this with a friend, and she was like, what? Moses led the people all that time, and then he can't enter into the promised land because he disobeys? (laughs) And I just had to laugh because I know it does sound really crazy, but God was really specific with the things that he wanted, and Moses disobeyed, so he was punished for it. Okay, so Joshua leads them into the promised land, and then the people begin to rebel again. They get drawn into sin. And so God raises up 15 judges. Now, these judges cause the people to repent and turn back to God, but then the people end up returning into sin again. And so you read about this huge cycle. The sin, the people obey for a while, and then the person who was leading them dies, and so they turn it back into sin. So you can read more about that in the book of Judges. So then time goes by, and the people decide that they want a king. God tries to warn the people that he wanted to be their king, and he was in charge of them. But they didn't want God as their king, and so... Although he knew that it was a bad idea, he consented to giving them a king. And that's where we're introduced to King Saul, the first king. He starts out good, but he eventually turns against God. And so God replaces him with David. David is one of the most important people in the Old Testament if you're going to understand the rest of the Bible because it's through David that God makes a promise that his throne would last forever and that a Messiah would come to fix the dilemma that we met up here, the first sin entering into the world. God tells David that he would raise up a a Messiah that would deliver the people back to him. So then David, David's reign ends and we meet his son Solomon. Solomon is wise and rich and he makes Israel really successful. But when he dies, the kingdom divides. So the once united kingdom under Solomon divides into a northern and a southern kingdom. You have the northern kingdom, which is Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is Judah. The northern kingdom ends up with 19 bad kings. They all rebel and turn against God. And so God causes them to be captured by people called the Assyrians. And then there's the southern kingdom. This is also known as Judah. Judah also had 19 kings, but some of them were good, like Josiah. We're going to meet Josiah and Jeremiah. Josiah tried to reform the people, but he failed. They constantly turned away from God. And so God raises up another nation called the Babylonians. And in the book of Jeremiah, we're going to read about Jeremiah's warning. He says, hey, come back to God. There is a nation raising against you, and you're going to go into captivity, but the people don't listen. And so we have the Babylonian captivity. They were in captivity for 70 years. But then Cyrus, the king at the time, allows them to return to Jerusalem. After all this time, you would think that the Jewish Jewish people would turn back to God and to respect him again, and you would think that they learned from the actions, but they didn't. And so the Old Testament ends. Old Testament would have just ended here. It would have been totally depressing because During this time, these people were separated from God and they were waiting for the coming Messiah to redeem them and fix the problem that sin created with the world. You see, because sin caused us to be separated from our Father. And when he gave the law to Moses in the wilderness, it was a hard law to keep. And people were falling short so much that they had to make animal sacrifices to repent for their sins. And they had to keep doing it yearly because the sacrifice didn't stick. But we have Jesus. We are able to 
repent and ask for forgiveness for our sins, and we are reconciled to our Father and no longer separated from Him. And so the New Testament is really exciting. I know the Old Testament is filled with a lot of information, and it can be really overwhelming, but I would highly encourage you to sit down and write down your own hand-drawn timeline because it just helps make everything mold together. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope you're having an awesome Sunday, and I look forward to hearing from you.